When we're calculating volume, we need the units of the length, the width, and the height to be the same. So before I even start multiplying these values, I need to convert them all to a common unit. I think I'm going to go with meters just because that's my base unit. So I'm going to take 2.5 centimeters. I need to get rid of centimeters and convert to meters. So I'm going to do 100 centimeters in one meter. And that gives me 2.5 times 10 to the negative 2 meters. I'm also going to do the same thing with that kilometer value. I'm going to convert it over to meters. So I want to get rid of kilometers. One kilometer has a thousand meters. So that winds up being 2.0 times 10 to the negative second meters. Now that I've done that, I can take the three values, the 4.5, the 2.5 times 10 to the negative second meters, and the 2.0 times 10 to the negative second meters, and multiply them to calculate the volume of this rectangular cell. So volume equals length times width times height. So I'm going to plug in 4.5 meters times 2.5 times 10 to the negative 2 meters times 2.0 times 10 to the negative 2 meters. We have meters times meters times meters, so our final units are going to be meters cubed. When I did this, I got 2.25 times 10 to the negative third meters cubed. The only problem with that number is at no point were we given three sig figs. Everything has two sig figs, including this number, right? So I'm going to report my final answer as 2.3 times 10 to the negative third meters cubed. In problem 24, there's a graduated cylinder that contains 33.8 mils of water. Then a stone with a mass of 28.4 grams is placed into that graduated cylinder and the water volume goes up to 44.1 mils. So using this information, we're asked to calculate the volume of the stone. Well, right off the bat, I'm kind of recognizing something. Why do I need the mass? And it turns out I don't. It's just extra information. So I'm going to cross it out. I don't care that the stone has a mass of 28.4 grams. I'm going to use volume by displacement. I'm going to do 44.1 minus 33.8 to calculate the volume of that stone. So the volume of the stone is 10.3 milliliters. So in 25A, we're going to need to use volume by displacement to figure out the volume of this battery. So our initial volume is equal to 12.4 mils. And our final volume after the battery is added to the graduated cylinder is equal to 20.2 mils. So the volume of the battery can be defined as the final volume minus the initial volume. So I'm going to do 20.2 mils minus 
12.4 mils. That means that the battery has a volume of 7.8 mils. In part B, since the battery is a cylinder, almost a cylinder, right? We can use um, the equation for the volume of a cylinder. So it's very similar to the volume of a circle, except you also have the height dimension. Um, I plugged everything into the formula. So use, if you want to, use the pi key on your calculator, or you could type in 3.14. The big thing here is the radius is squared. So the squared part gets distributed to the 0.71. So in my calculator, I need to do 0.71 squared. But the squared part also applies to the units of centimeters. So now I have centimeters squared times centimeters, which gives me the appropriate final units of centimeters cubed. Um, when I did all of that, I got 7.819 centimeters cubed, because I had the centimeters squared times the centimeters. And it didn't tell me what units to use, but since I'm already in milliliters over here, I think I'm just gonna change the centimeters cubed over to milliliters so that the two numbers are um, comparable. And we also need to round to two sig figs because of the radius. So my final answer here is going to be 7.8 milliliters, which happens to be the same volume that we got over here. So either method works for calculating the volume of this battery.